this is one of the most powerful iconic and i should add heartbreaking pieces i have ever thought strange fruit is looked upon as the masterpiece of abel merapol the american poet and songwriter of russian jewish origin abel merapol was a school teacher by profession he was for some years a member of the american communist party the most important thematic concerns of his corpus are subjects like equality opportunity discrimination and racial justice strange fruit which captures the essence of man's inhumanity to man has as its locale the southern states of america it was sung by billy holiday and her orchestra now study of black american literature can be complete without a study of strange fruit billy holiday is one of the stars of american jazz her performances were remarkable for their vocal delivery and the improvisational skills that they displayed there is no doubt that billy holiday is one of the all time greats of american jazz music numerous biographies and films have been created about her the latest movie the latest biographical movie being the united states versus billy holiday strange fruit is a rather strange poem it is more a song than a poem it refuses to comply with the normal parameters of poetry its strangeness begins with its title it is said that the poet abel merapol who wrote under the pseudonym lewis allen selected this particular title after much cogitation it was a carefully selected title carefully chosen title strange fruit and it is certainly a very appropriate title a title which suits the body of the poem perfectly the title consists of two words two terms strange and fruit 
What is the meaning of the first word in the title? Strange. Strange means unusual, unexpected, surprising, something which is not considered normal, something which cannot be justified, something which is unaccountable, something weird, something even crazy, something we would not meet with in other places. Strange. Fruit. Fruit is a very common word. Every child knows it. It's one of the very first words that a child learning English would normally master. Fruit is a tree product, a plant product. It is soft, it contains seeds, its flesh is eaten and it is often, it is often sweet. But I think there is one more meaning for the word fruit which is very much applicable in this context. Fruit can mean the result of labor, the result of effort. We sometimes use the plural form, the fruits of one's labors. So we have two meanings. One is a tree product, a plant product which is eaten, which is often sweet. The other is the result of labor, the result of effort. And I think that both these meanings are equally applicable in the context of this particular poem. As we read the body of the poem, we will understand how the poet is able to make the body of the poem relate itself to the second word in its title, the second word in the title of the poem, in a constantly double manner. Wherever fruit is used, it can also mean it can simultaneously mean the physical fruit and also the fruit of effort, the fruit of labor. Southern trees bear a strange fruit. Some half a dozen very ordinary words are put together by the poet in order to form a brilliant opening line. Southern trees bear a strange fruit. Southern. The reference here is to the American South, to the southern states of the USA. I think they are 16 in number, 16 states, and the Federal District of Columbia. In 1860-61, 11 of the southern states broke away from the Union and formed the Confederacy and formed the Confederate States of America. Seven of the southern states had been slave states, southern trees, Trees are very important in the South, much more than they are in the North, because the economy of the South is largely based on agriculture, while the economy of the North is largely based on industry. Southern trees. Many of the Southern states 
where plantation states. So trees are especially important in these states. Southern trees bear a strange fruit. Strange, unusual, unfamiliar, unaccountable, unjustifiable, crazy, fruit of course I've said has two meanings, two important meanings. One is a tree product which is soft, which contains seeds, which can be eaten, which is often sweet. And the other is the fruits of the labor, the result of the labor. Strange fruit, the last two words of the first line of the poem form the title of the poem. Thus the poem has an emphasizative title. It is not an additive title. It is not a title which adds to the body of the poem, which adds to the semantic significance generated by the body of the poem. On the other hand, the title emphasizes one particular element in the semantic significance of the poem, in the sympathetic significance of the body of the poem. Southern trees bear a strange fruit. The opening line captures much of the semantic significance of the poem, much of what the poet desires to convey. That in the South, the trees bear a fruit which is beyond justification, beyond explanation, beyond understanding. Unusual, crazy, even insane. Blood on the leaves and blood at the root. There is something strange, something peculiar about the trees in the American South, they are covered with blood. You can find human blood on the leaves of the trees and also at the root of the trees. The poet's point is that the entire plantation economy of the southern states of the United States of America is smeared with blood. Not just blood, human blood. Not just human blood, but the blood of the black people. Black bodies swinging in the southern breeze. The breeze of the south. For those who feel a sense of nostalgia for their hometowns, for their villages, for their native lands, in the southern states, the breeze there is beautiful. Those who feel a sense of attachment to their homeland and their homeland lies in one of the southern states, the breeze there is certainly beautiful. The southern breeze, which rouses a sense of nostalgia, but the poet takes a radically different perspective. Black bodies swinging in the southern breeze. The southern breeze is beautiful, but what do we see there? Black bodies swinging. To swing means to oscillate, to sway, to move back and forth. 
black bodies swinging. The references to the lynchings of the blacks. A black man would be killed without a proper trial. Usually by hanging. This is what is known as lynching. Black bodies swinging in the southern breeze. The reference is to the bodies of the black persons who had been lynched. And we find the bodies swaying, oscillating, moving back and forth, moving from side to side in the breeze in the light wind, strange fruit hanging from the poplar trees. The poplar is an iconic tree of the southern states of the United States of America. The poplar belongs to the willow family. It grows rapidly and it has innumerable uses in the plywood industry for example in the paper industry for example it is widely cultivated in the american south strange fruit hanging from the poplar trees the poet says that the bodies of the black persons who had been lynched. They are hanging from the poplar trees and they are indeed strange fruit. Usually in a tree we find fruits hanging but here we find the bodies of the lynched blacks hanging and they are indeed the fruits of the trees though they are strange fruits. What does the stanza convey? The stanza presents a graphic picture a riveting picture of the American South. The American South which has glamorized, idealized, praised by its admirers. But the American South is also a society built on discrimination, an economy built on exploitation, a world in which violence is an integral part and where lynching of black men and women is an everyday event. It has to be pointed out that hanging the victim from the branch of a tree appears to have been the favorite modus operandi of lynch mobs and it is with this modus operandi in mind that the poet speaks of bodies hanging from trees we now move to the second stanza. Let me read the first line. 
or the second stanza pastoral scene of the gallant south what a beautiful line what a romantic line a line which evokes powerful nostalgia a powerful sense of nostalgia in all the admirers of the american south pastoral scene of the gallant south pastor means shepherd in some churches especially protestant churches the priests are called pastors pastoral means relating to sheep cattle grazing rural life the countryside especially presenting idealized versions romanticized versions of country life pastoral scene perhaps i could say a bucolic scene pastoral scene of the gallant south gallant heroic relentless brave fearless and also charming attentive to women protective of women pastoral scene of the gallant south if there is a heaven on earth if there is a paradise on earth it must be the american south where you can come across the pastoral scene of the gallant south the expectations raised by the opening line of the second stanza are completely shattered by the second line the bulging eyes and a twisted mouth the impression generated by the first line which makes us feel that if there is a paradise on earth it is the american south with its pastoral scene if there is a heaven on earth it is the gallant south that impression is dashed to the ground by the second line the bulging eyes and the twisted mouth again this is a reference to the victims of lynchings who were frequently hanged to death from the branches of trees and you could meet with their corpses you could come across their dead bodies their eyes bulging and their mouths twisted we now come to a very beautiful line the scent of magnolias sweet and fresh i can almost smell the flowers i am reminded of the depiction of the american south the romanticized depiction of the american south the idealized depiction of the american south that we meet with in margaret mitchell's novel gone with the wind and of course also in the movie version of the novel the scent of magnolias sweet and fresh the magnolia is a flower deeply associated with the southern states of the united states of america magnolia grandiflora i think that's the botanical name is the state flower of louisiana 
Magnolia is positioned in the state flag of the state of Mississippi and Houston in Texas is called Magnolia City. The poet deliberately evokes a very romanticized, a very idealized picture of the American South with its vast plantations, redolent with the scent of magnolias, the scent of magnolias sweet and fresh. In the last line of the stanza, there is a sudden attempt, there is a shocking attempt, there is an unexpected attempt to dash this picture, this romanticized picture, this idealized picture of the American South to the ground. Then the sudden smell of burning flesh. Then the sudden smell of burning flesh. We were smelling magnolias so closely associated with the American South. Very much part of the Southern culture. Occupying the pride of place in the flora of the Southern states. Emblematic of many of the states of the South. And while we were enjoying the scent of the magnolias, so sweet, so fresh, what do we smell? Then the sudden smell of burning flesh. Some black man or some black woman is being burnt to death. And we smell the pungent smell the nauseating smell, the unbearable smell, the overwhelming smell of burning flesh. And I would wish to point out that the second most popular modus operandi of the lynch mob, of the lynch mob of the South was burning. The favorite Maldus operandi was hanging the victim to death from the branch of a tree. The second favorite Maldus operandi was burning the victim to death. And it is this second most popular Maldus operandi that is alluded to in the present line. Thus, the world of the southern states of the United States is a world of sharp contradictions. On the one hand, you have the breeze, the trees, the pastoral scenes, the gallantry, the magnolias, and their lovely sense. But on the other, you have the lynchings, the lynchings of the black men and the black women. It is clear that beneath the venia, beneath the venia of charm, and tradition, you have exploitation, discrimination, violence, and bloodshed. This is the reality of the American South. This poem, which is more of a song, 
than of a poem, became famous because Billie Holiday and her orchestra sang it all over the United States. There are some who claim that Billie Holiday's father was lynched to death, to death and that that was the reason why she was able to sing the song in such a sincere, in such a powerful, in such a spectacular manner. But the fact is that Billie Holiday's father, Clarence Holiday, who was a singer himself, had been exposed to mustard gas during World War I and as a result developed a serious lung condition. Clarence Holiday was denied treatment at the many whites only hospitals in the United States. As a result, his lung condition deteriorated and he soon passed away. There is no doubt that the, the major theme, the main theme of the present poem resonated intimately with certain events in the life of Billie Holiday. And she used to claim that the present poem reminded her of her father. But the fact remains that to state that Billie Holiday's father, Clarence Holiday, was literally lynched to death is baseless. Clarence Holiday died because he was denied treatment at whites only hospitals. And though it cannot be said that in a literal sense Clarence Holiday was lynched to death, it is true that in a, fifth, in a metaphorical sense, in a figurative sense, Clarence Holiday was indeed lynched to death and his memory served as a remarkable source of inspiration to Billy Holiday to sing this song. We now come to the last stanza of the poem. It's a powerful, terrifying, heart-rending stanza. In a way, it is an amplification of much that has been said before. The focus, the attention is focused on the fruit, the strange fruit hanging from the branches of the trees of the southern plantations. Here is a fruit for crows to pluck. To pluck means to remove, to take hold of something and to remove it, to pull something out. Here is a fruit, strange fruit, for crows to pluck. Crows pluck all available fruit. Crows are rather large birds with heavy bills, with glossy feathers, black in color, black, glossy black feathers. Here is a fruit for crows to pluck. For the rain to gather, 
the rain falls on the fruit and some of the raindrops they remain on the fruit the rain gathers on the fruits not all the rainwater drips down some rainwater remains on the fruit for the wind to suck to suck means to draw something into your mouth using your breath your by taking a breath in you take something into your mouth you cause the inward movement of something into your mouth for the wind to suck the wind draws the fruit into its mouth for the sun to rot when the fruit which is drenched in the rain is exposed to sun it starts rotting it's a deadly combination rain and sun as a result the fruit starts rotting for the tree to drop ultimately the tree drops the fruit it happens in the case of every fruit the fruit cannot remain where it is forever here is a strange and bitter crop it is not one fruit it is not an isolated fruit it's a fruit which is commonly found in the southern plantations it's a strange fruit what is the fruit the dead body of a black man or a black woman and bitter crop very painful very traumatizing here is a fruit the beauty of the stanza is that here is a fruit the poet in a very simple in a very unaffected manner speaks of the fruit as if it were a real fruit here is a fruit and what happens to the fruit everything that happens to a fruit that can possibly happen to a fruit happens to this fruit the crows pluck it rainwater gathers on it the wind sucks it the sun rots it and finally the tree drops it but this is no ordinary fruit this is a strange fruit this is the dead body of a black man who has been lynched of a black woman who has been lynched and the crop the harvest is bitter billy holiday used to remark i've already said it that the song reminded her reminded her of what happened to her father and also that this was something which was happening which continued to happen in the south at that time she used to say that this is not something which refers exclusively to the past but this is something which refers to a phenomenon very much live a phenomenon taking place in the south at that point of time at the point of time at which she was singing the song and it is indeed a strange crop a strange harvest a bitter bitter harvest the harvest of strange fruit which is actually the corpse of a black man or a black woman who has been lynched i think that we can observe that what is said here in the last stanza of the poem in this terrifying last stanza of the poem has very wide applicability what is said here applies not merely to the strange fruit 
hanging from the branches of the trees of the southern plantations. But to agriculture, to the agriculture of the south in general, the crop, commercially cultivated fruit, vegetable, large-scale cultivation. You must remember that the southern states were fundamentally agricultural rather than industrial. Perhaps not merely applicable to agriculture, but also to the economy, because as I said, the economy of the southern states was based on agriculture rather than on industry. Whatever is said here is applicable very much to the southern economy. Perhaps I can go a step further and say that it's applicable not merely to the agriculture, not merely to the economy, but to the civilization itself. The civilization of the southern states of America has been built on the dead bodies of the black men and the black women has been built using the blood of black men and black women. I think everything that is said in the start is applicable to the civilization because ultimately it is a rotten civilization. To rot means to decay, to decompose. And it is a rotten civilization which has built itself on the foundations of discrimination, exploitation, violence, bloodshed and murder. What are the important themes dealt with in Strange Fruit? The American South, the pastoral, the bucolic, the gallant, the chivalrous American South, the flora of the American South, including the poplars and the magnolias. The relationship between the whites and the blacks in the American South, white supermassism, black victimization, lynchings, how the lynching of black men and women is a regular is a regular phenomenon in the American South. How the two most important, the two most popular methodologies adopted by the lynch mobs are hanging and burning. Either the victim is hanged to death or burned to death. How southern agriculture, southern, the southern economy is built on the dead bodies of the blacks. Discrimination, victimization, exploitation of the black community in the American South. And I think that tangentially the poem alludes to white supermassism and white supermassist organizations like the Ku Klux Klan, which were frequently behind the lynchings. Let us attempt to scrutinize the technical aspects of the poem. 
we shall begin with the title. As has already been remarked, the poem has a very appropriate title. Not just a very appropriate title, it's also a remarkable title, a very impressive title, Strange Fruit. It is an emphasizing title because it does not add to the body of the poem. It does not add to the semantic content of the body of the poem. Instead, it chooses an element in the semantic content of the body of the poem and emphasizes that element, strange fruit. The word strange fruit appear in the very first line of the poem. So it's an emphasizing title. The diction is extremely simple. You must remember that Strange Fruit is a poem. It is also a song. A poem may take a rare word, a strange word, a difficult word, but not a song. A word which is not easily intelligible to the listener would be completely out of place in a song and would be capable of, of ruining the impact of the song. Hence, the diction of strange fruit is extremely simple, extremely elementary. The poem is organized in three stanzas. The first stanza consists of four lines. The second stanza also consists of four lines. But the last stanza comprises six lines. And it may be pointed out that relatively shorter lines are used in the third stanza. The poem has a rhyme scheme. In fact, the first two stanzas follow a very regular rhyme scheme. The rhyme scheme of the first stanza is A, A, B, B. And the rhyme scheme of the second stanza is also the same, A, A, B, B. When we move to the third stanza, we meet with a rhyme scheme, but it is rather irregular. The first line of the third stanza rhymes with the third line of the stanza. But the second line of the third stanza refuses to rhyme with the fourth line of the stanza. The last two lines of the third stanza, the last two lines of the poem do rhyme. Thus, the poem does have a rhyme scheme which is regular to begin with but which becomes rather irregular towards the end of the poem. The imagery of the poem is striking. It leaves an indelible impression on the mind of the reader. There are two kinds of images in the poem. On the one hand you have nature images, images of the pastoral south, of the bucolic south, images of the flora and the fauna of the American South, of the beautiful, enchanting na nature that is met with in the American South. On the other hand, you have images of violence, victimization, lynching, bloodshed, 
hanging, burning, murder, torture. And I think that the magic of the poem is generated by the sharp and bitter contrast between the two sets of images. The poem would not have been the magnificent piece it is if it had not been for this contrast. Alliteration is the repetition of consonantal sounds. This piece makes frequent use of alliteration in order to generate a special effect. The very first line of the poem makes use of alliteration. Southern trees bear a strange fruit. Similarly, we have black bodies and sudden smell Anaphora is the repetition of a word or a phrase. We meet with anaphora in the very second line of the poem. Blood on the leaves and blood at the root. Irony is the figure of speech in which the speaker says something and means something else. Usually means the opposite of what he says. Gallant South, in the opening line of the second stanza of the poem, is a brilliant exemplification of the poet's use of irony. To juxtapose means to place side by side. Juxtaposition is a powerful tool used by poets to drive home the point. There is a brilliant exemplification of juxtaposition in the present poem. The poet speaks of the sweet smell of magnolia flowers and then of the smell of burning flesh. A large part of the magic of the poem is generated by the powerful metaphors used in the piece. The tree stands for white supermassism. The fruit stands for the black man, the black woman, alive or dead. Blood on the leaves and blood at the root stands for the blood-stained hands of the white masters. The poplars and the magnolias symbolize the agriculture of the American South. You must remember that poplar trees and magnolia trees are widely cultivated in the southern states of the United States of America. The trees are the symbols for the agriculture of the south, for the economy of the south, which has been built on the dead bodies 
of the black people. The trees are powerful symbols for an agricultural system, for an economic system based on exploitation, victimization and discrimination. Strange fruit is as much song as poem. The piece has a highly musical quality and part of the extraordinary popularity of Strange Fruit arose from the magic of Billie Holiday's voice which added to the magic of the poem. Billie Holiday and her orchestra sang the song all over the United States. And you must remember that Strange Fruit was not just another song for Billie Holiday. In a metaphorical sense, her father had been lynched to death. And she used to say that she was reminded of her father when she sang this song. This song was in a way about her own father. It may be added that the death of Billie Holiday at the age of 44 in a hotel room was as almost as was almost as grotesque as the deaths described in the poem. Billie Holiday was arrested for allegedly having drugs and according to one version she was handcuffed and she died in her handcuffs.